What if I told you that creating an ideal bodybuilding diet for fat loss doesn't have to follow the same old tired rules? Tell me more. Let me show you the five biggest tips that I personally use to drop 46 pounds in my prep for a bodybuilding show this year without feeling like I was suffering on a daily basis. First up, find the right amount of meal prep that keeps you in the kitchen for an amount of time that feels sustainable. I find that dedicating an entire afternoon to meal prep is a pain in the butt that I just don't want to do long term. Prep time. So I construct a plan that requires me to mass prep two, maybe three things that typically happen on a rotating schedule. So I'm not even doing all of those on the same day. Maybe one night I have to prep ground turkey and while that's happening, I'm multitasking, cleaning the kitchen, doing laundry, whatever. So it's not just meal prep time, but I'm getting done other things I have to do anyway at the same time. My motto is simple, efficiency, efficiency. Efficiency. For other meals, I'm either cooking fresh, something simple like eggs, oats, whatever, picking grab and go things or assembling stuff I can easily heat up in the microwave or something like that. Okay, tip number two, don't fall into the trap of thinking everything has to be clean and pristine. If you enjoy eating clean, that's great. And don't let me stop you. I do it myself most of the time. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. But for a lot of people, constantly thinking about the stuff they can't have makes the diet feel more like a prison than it has to. For my show prep, my post-workout carb of choice was Oreo cookies. Until I had to reduce my fats and those no longer fit. Sad face, sad face. Then I switched to Honey Nut Cheerios all the way up until show day. Having that little treat in there daily helped the diet feel a little bit more normal, and like I wasn't missing out on stuff, and it reduced the desire to overeat and binge on crap. Number three, cater your meal size to your appetite trends. For me, I work out in the morning, so my pre and post workout meals are the first two of the day. I need carbs there, but I have some left over and I definitely shifted those heavily towards the final meal. In the afternoon, I'm plenty busy with client work, scripting and editing videos, etc. And it's easy to just be focused on what I'm doing and not think about food. I'm busy. I'm busy. But once dinner time rolls around, I'm finally in a spot where I can let my brain shut down. And that is when I tend to get a bit more snacky and hangry. So I set aside extra macros to bulk that final meal up and it makes a huge difference in letting my rumbly stomach shut up at the end of the day. Avoiding those spots where you're constantly hungry and miserable, again, it's a big deal in making things feel more sustainable. Quick aside, if you're interested in more diet tips like this, you can give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications to make sure you see more. If you want a lot more, you can check the link in the description below the video to read about my new course, Macro Boot Camp, where I dig in on more topics like this while also covering how to properly set and adjust your macros, troubleshoot plateaus, we build meal plans together in various macro tracking apps, along with having full tutorials on the best and most popular of those apps. And check it out, there's a ton in there and I'm adding more stuff to it in the weeks and months to come also. Okay, tip number four. This kind of ties into number two, but make sure your plan is appealing from start to finish. If your calories are restricted and if one of your meals is something you just don't look forward to, that sucks. This sucks. Every meal at that point is a decent chunk of your calories and you're looking at a several hour window of each day where you're eating stuff that just isn't appealing. Now, obviously it can't be donuts and cake all day. Donuts. But if chicken, veggies, and rice isn't very appealing, don't set yourself up to be eating that twice a day. Change one of those or change both, but make sure it's something you can look forward to on some level. Get creative with your protein sources and build a meal around something different. You know, change to a new source, whether that might be Greek yogurt, eggs, deli turkey slices, jerky, some kind of protein powder creation, or just take a staple protein like chicken and find a new way to prepare it to make it fresh and feel new. And finally, number five, this is more of a basic and technical thing, but make sure all of your meals are built around a protein source and you're keeping those protein sources fairly evenly sized throughout the day. If your total protein target for the day is 180 grams, for example, don't put 70 grams of that all in one meal and have another that's only 15 grams or even less. Aim for at least four meals, five is often better, and try to keep your protein intake per meal around an average size. This is gonna make your overall day a bit more consistently filling and 
will keep you from taking in more protein at once than your body can optimally use for muscle protein synthesis. If your daily protein target is 150 grams and you're eating five times a day, whether that's meals or snacks, doesn't matter, try to keep them all in the 30 gram range, plus or minus a reasonable amount. Being consistent and regular with your protein intake also helps the body stay in a state of positive nitrogen balance, which is key for growing or retaining muscle tissue. And bonus tip, if you find yourself super hungry, limit your protein shakes and opt for more solid food protein sources. Liquids always empty faster from the stomach and will leave you feeling empty a lot sooner. Solid food sources all the way in those cases. Okay, those are my top five tips. What would you add to that list? Disagree with anything on mine? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. And as always, remember that everyone commenting is a human being, so please be respectful. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and check out one of these videos, which might be right up your alley. Thanks for watching.